So, Jen, the upright piano, let, let's look at it and kind of give a basic overview sure. for the audience mm -hmm. of what the interior of the piano looks like, if okay. you don't mind. Well, basically, um, well, we, we start with a key, and the key mm -hmm. is like a level, and it has a, a middle bridge that you push down, and it will make the weapon go up and push the uh, hammer with the shank and then hit the string and repeat it. So you have se several parts to make this function and without getting uh, uh, any kind of flaw or lost uh, motion mm -hmm. of it. Uh, on, on a studio or console piano, it takes a little bit more effort than a grand piano because you have more parts to make it work versus uh, a grand piano works with more like gravity, so it takes, it takes less, actually less parts. So uh, we got the tuning pins. This is the cast iron plate, goes all the way down. Are most of the pianos today with the cast iron plates? Yes, yeah. yes they are, they're full, full cord. So <clears throat> then you go all the way down and you have your lower bridge. Uh, you just can see the very end of the uh, cast iron goes all the one which makes this, the, the structure of the piano very steady. So in, in any move, they will not really uh, come apart on you. So uh, very important to keep always the, uh, the piano on one level place and away from uh, any sunlight okay. or any draft or against any big window. Trying to you know, get also away from the, uh, a, a major uh, AC vent or a heater uh, in the house. So variations in temperature and yes. sunlight. Okay. Even though they're closed, <clears throat> they can still uh, absorb all these changes from the back, from behind. So uh, then you got this called the action assembly, which is what holds all the uh, hammers and moving parts. So basically, it's a uh, it's a very complex uh, instrument as far as parts goes. Most parts are equal, uh, cut, but the springs. Um, from one side to another side, they they get thicker because they they had to uh, compensate for the size of the hammers. So on the upper they're smaller, on the left are bigger. So the springs that they're going to be used on on this section mid to the left, the springs are going to be more aggress aggressive. Okay. And, and do 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 different piano manufacturers manufacture that differently for tone or tonality or is it all basically the same type of structure? It's the same uh, basic uh, uh, structure. structure. Okay. Uh, they had tried to do some different uh, uh, actions on, on past just to, to uh, marketing wise. Sure. They're trying to uh, do something different but they always come back to the traditional way. Traditional. Of, yes. Which is, so I know that some parents think that you know their, their child as they're learning to play they're banging on the keys that they're going to damage the piano. Is that well, something they need to think about? You can you can put some kind of a pressure on keys, but uh, at the same time you're taking a risk of uh, damaging. Uh, an extremely uh, sudden uh, impact could really uh, break some mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the piano. Uh, it's, 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 it's made for playing hard, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, made out to play very gently and soft. Sure. Beyond that point, you have to be uh, as, uh, careful, careful, not, not and to maintain. Really, yes. Jen, there were, of course, here in Houston, we had problems with flooding. So, can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about that as well? What you've seen sure. and damaging, and what, what happens to a piano once it, it's it's immersed in water? So, surprisingly, uh, before on uh, when I started, uh, pianos were more like uh, what we call a lacquer finish, not polyester like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, lacquer finishes were more uh, uh, vulnerable to to get more damage. For some reason, uh, nowadays the, the the polyester finish can withstand uh, as an amount of water mm. flood if it drops out of it quick. Because the uh, the what they do is uh, it's like like a dip, and it's not like a painting. So the wood is concealed. Uh, let's say like you, it's, it's just completely concealed, so the water just doesn't get into the wood that easy. So I've seen pianos where they got, you know, three feet of water, and the water res uh, receded in 
in two hours, and the piano still and together. No, dam <coughs> no, no damage. No damage to the soundboard. No damage. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, they do apply some kind of a, a lacquer or protective, and it's not like the old piano. Mm -hmm. They they can really be new different. technologies. Yes. Right. And Jen, talk a little bit about the finish. So a, um, someone in their home has a beautiful upright or a grand with this type of finish. How do they maintain the, f the cabinet itself? What do you suggest? On, on a polyester finish like this, uh, it's good to have it clean. Uh, special solutions you can get off the market or you can home do it yourself, like uh, mix a little bit of water and a small amount of uh, clear ammonia. Or in, in years to come, uh, to bring, bring back the, the, the luxury of the piano, you can apply the best uh, wax you can find. A car wax? A car wax, a car wax. works very good. Okay. Yeah, it's applied the same way gently and you can rub off and you bring back the shine. No, and the scratches and things of that nature. Because yeah. you also do that. I've known that you've gone yes. out to some homes where they had, where they were moving, or something dropped on the piano, or water stains and things like that. Yeah. You were able to, to correct those problems as well. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the most uh, difficult thing to repair on a polyester is uh, a nick, what we call it, uh, something like it, it dropped on on the finish and it made it, uh, it took a piece of mm -hmm. uh, that that protective uh, polyester. That is very complex to, to repair. To repair. But to to polish up and to take hairline scratches on time with time, you put your cloud, you put your books, and you know they just get dull. Just a way to on polish it, you can still buff that out. Buff it out. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Jen, so you do you also reconstruct pianos as well? Yes. Um, yeah. For example, someone had a piano, say they want to build it, and you can actually go out and build it for sure. you know, build it with with you know the parts that you need and so yes. forth. Yeah. It always come to it was it, it always come to the balance uh, situation uh, versus to reinvest. Of course, and once you once you want to invest, it's because it belongs in the family. Sure. And yes, we can do that. Parts are still available for that, mm -hmm. and you, also the things. But to to put on the balance uh, on my honest way point of view, it's just it's it either that let go or you have just get something that is gonna go for the next generation with no problem or you know because no, no matter how much you invest on on uh, rebuilding a piano completely you still got to use the main carcass hmm. to to build over it so right. it's the just bones. not a we said the good yes. bones right good, 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 yeah good, good. Great. anything else you'd like to tell the audience a little bit about maybe maintenance or what they're looking at on, on the upright because we're going to move to the grand piano as well. Yeah, on, on, on basically it's simple. Um, it's a piano that uh, uh, it's, it's like a, let's say when you buy something new that you want to take care of it, you don't want to have it uh, abuse of it. So you want to put it in a place where it's away from harm, harmful uh, sunlight or harmful uh, temperatures. temperatures. Mm -hmm and hands that you know they can play good and some hands that can be you know kind of too heavy so by playing too much too fast and too strong is good but also it, it takes a lot of tear and wear on the piano so the console piano was more designed for uh, home gathering and practice uh, not as much as a performance piano. A performance piano yes right. so beyond that you know our pianos can last uh, easy Seventy years. Yeah, they sell. Most Already. of the pianos are sold with a warranty of ten years. Now, yes. some parts. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, one of the um, things that we hear from customers with the new pianos is the issue of a sticky key. It seems to be like the, the hot button where they they call and then, of course, right. they they call you and say, I, you know, the, the, it seems like the key is not correct. Can you just kind of walk us through a little sure. bit of what what the, why that happens and what the what the symptoms are and how to fix it? On on, on most pianos when they're new. Uh, between the store and the house, they they go through a small process of uh, a temperature change. Mm -hmm. And once they get to the house, they want to get back to the same setting on the store. And when that, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in that period of time, the keys will sometimes get sluggish. And I'll show you, uh, for example, we're gonna take this key here. And you can see there is red fill on the top and a bigger, red field on the bottom here. When this field gets a little bit spongy because of the humidity, it doesn't 
move like a shoe. And that's what you get, basically you... you the sticky, sticky key. key. Okay. Yes. On the new piano, it's a 90% throttling. Uh, piano only goes to that. That, could, that does, it's very simple to take care of it. It's not a big, big uh, job. Very simple. On the piano that is uh, possibly over 10 to 15 years older, is usually the sluggishness comes from the uh, weapons that holds the, the whole shank with the hammers attached. They, there's a brass pin holding that entire part and then it just gets sluggish. And it gets sluggish to the point that it is almost has the same symptoms as a sticky key, but it's just the hammer going back slow. So on the new piano, most, most uh, problems are going to be on the keys because they're just more uh, exposed to the, uh, the temperature. Once you open up the front, you expose the, uh, the new felt while the rest is just closed. So there's not really much of a contact with the interior. Are there parts that need to be replaced? Like you said, for example, maybe some of the felt underneath because of the sticky, do you replace any no, of those no, parts? No, it's, it's very simple. It's just, uh, it's, it really is a matter of uh, 10 minutes. Hmm. You know, it takes more time taking the boards off than really doing the repair. Okay. It's just small adjustment. And what about sound? Anything in the sound issues? Uh, Sometimes they they're, like they they're, they're more of a metally sound or something. yes, yeah. the metal sound is because sometimes we we can uh, there are three strings per hammer, so when one of those three is out, it makes a like a metallic sound. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we confuse it by uh, a, a, a foreign piece lingering, but it's not. It's just the the string one of uh, one of the three of them had just gone out, and then makes the other two sound bad. So it's just basically tuning what it needs. Tuning. Yes, okay. tuning will take care of that. So Jen, w when someone l is looking at a piano and they're looking, let's say, their first piano or they want to buy a piano for their child, some of the things that they should look for, what, what do you think they should be looking at at a piano, aside from a price or a brand? Well, uh, is they going to buy a piano from individual? Mm -hmm. Well, they should uh, ask the uh, previous owner to see uh, they have any kind of uh, background uh, 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 log on how many times it's been tuned. It's usually uh, some customers do uh, uh, do write down the, the dates and they keep pretty well. Also you can look at the uh, at, uh, the scoloration on the keys to see uh, that tells you also if it's been exposed to uh, extreme uh, temperature changes. Also, you can look at the uh, hammer ends where it strikes the string, and if you really see a lot of indentions or marks from the string itself, uh, you have to consider that it has some, uh, we call it manage, or <laughs> it has some music. A piano that gets used like a, a teacher's piano, uh, they somehow, uh, on top of the keys, you see uh, a little bit of um, uh, hair lines of uh, felt on top of it because they it's just the more you use the more they like they like shed so they will be over the keys. That's one sign to, to notice it. But mainly is the uh, the hammer. Hammers. The hammer has will have a uh, marks on it. Okay. That would be on a used piano, let's say maybe perhaps from an individual